As the soul traverses the physical and metaphysical plane, one of the biggest challenges is what is right relationship for our Atman, our true selves, and with the material world around us. The lunar eclipse that took place this morning is in Anuradha Nakshatra. And so for the next two weeks, the eclipse energy is going to be in this nakshatra. So the way that I organize these videos is to tell you about the energy because they will describe what type of conflict you can anticipate and the intentions behind what interactions you'll have. So I start with that and then the second part of the video will be a highlight for your sign so that you can check on exactly where in your life and how in your life this might be affecting you. I do recommend that you watch your sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. Every person reads differently, so if you're new to my channel, find out which of these works for you. I do these every new moon and full moon. So when the new moon cycles come around and the full moon cycles come around, you know which of the signs in these videos resonates most effectively for you. So Anurata is the nakshatra of dedication and devotion. It is symbolized by an archway, as in the goal, the thing that you're moving toward. The purpose behind Anurata is Dharma, which is right. What is right? And so Anurata really looks at right relationship. And it's this period in the soul growth where you're becoming more material. And as you become more material, you start to lose your connection with the divine. And so what Anurata is doing is it's looking at how are we tending to our inherent worth? How are we seeing to that? And specifically, how we are seeing to that through our relationships. So we're looking at several aspects of right relationship. Anuradha Nakshatra is in the constellation of Scorpio. And one of the elements of Scorpio is deception. We're looking at what is your relationship with deception or also what is hidden. So to illustrate, here are two Anuradha natives. The first is an actor who plays in two major productions. One of them is Game of Thrones, in which he plays a person who is completely immersed in espionage. So he deals in secrets. And then in Downton Abbey, he's a newspaper man. And the same thing, he deals in secrets. So on a low end of Scorpio, it's a person who deals in worldly secrets. On the high end of Scorpio, another Anurata ascendant is C.C. Zayn, who was the person selected to write out the Brotherhood of Light, ancient hermetics into student format so that people could access hidden knowledge, occult knowledge. So you see, what is hidden? Is it the secrets of the world that are used to manipulate people and gain power? Or are they the secrets of occultism and spirituality to help people assist in humanity? The next element is our relationship with relationships. So what is right relationship when it comes to relationships? The deity associated with Anuradha is Mitra, and Mitra is a god of the sun, and Mitra exposes things, exposes the path. It's interesting as in lunar eclipses, eclipses expose things, right? So you have Mitra, the god of the sun, and Varuna is also associated, and Varuna rules cosmic law. Varuna is also the ruler of the deep and in charge of night. So you have Varuna, you have night, and then you have Mitra, day. And here's the thing with it. Night and day are distinctly different. At dawn, they meet, they merge, and one becomes the other. At dusk, they meet and merge, and one becomes the other. While they have these parts where they merge together, they are distinctly separate. Just like in your friends group, in your relationships groups, uh, with your significant other, with anybody you do dealings with. This is business, this is anything. The people you deal with, you contribute to them and they contribute to you because you are each distinctly different. You bring some attributes to the relationship which enhance each other, but if you all brought the same attributes, it wouldn't really be a relationship, it would just be a continuation of yourself, you see? So you have to be separate, night and day, you have to be separate, in order to be distinctive. 
And in order to have relationships that complement one another, you bring different features. So that's why you separate, develop yourself, and then come together. So while the deity Mitra is a union maker, the ruler of Anuradha is Saturn. Boundaries. Another item with Anuradha is right relationship with our experiences. Associated with Anuradha is the lotus flower. And the lotus flower is something that has its roots in the mud and then has a long root and at the top of the water has a beautiful flower that's seen. Now, if you're looking, you only see the beautiful flower, but the beautiful flower is the result of a lot of work and roots in the mud. The enactment of Saturn with us as humans moving toward divinity, we need to have our roots in the mud. We need to have our roots in humility, based in humility. And why is that? Well, did you ever grow from an experience that was not difficult? Did you ever have everything going well for you and then at the end of it you said, my God, I really am a new person because of that? And not necessarily, it doesn't really work like that. It's the humility, it's the circumstances, the life experience that cause us to be humble, that cause us to feel humility, that enable us to develop the spiritual fortitude to ascend. What is right relationship with devotion? Well, if you merge with a thing, you cannot be devoted to the thing. You cannot actually love the thing because it's part of you. It stops, right? If you merge with the thing you are devoted to, you lose the ability to interact with that thing. Anurata is the power of devotion and worship. And it's about the coming together. You know when you have, you have an amazing meditation or if, um, if you work with intuitive gifts, but these different ways that we contact the divine. These different ways that we contact parts of ourselves that aren't worldly parts of ourselves. That's a particular feeling that unless you've done it, you don't know what it's about. So you can't describe it to somebody because they don't know what it's about if they haven't done it. But if you're on this path, the difficulties with experiences, with people, with all of the troubles, when you have that connection, it makes it all worth it. The thing about it, we don't walk every day, all day with that connection. You can step in and out of it. Sometimes you stay with it for longer periods of time than others, but it's not all the time with you. And in a way, you see that makes it a bit more special because you can connect with it and then you can come back and do your work here in the material plane with the knowledge of what you really are and with the knowledge of what you can truly access. So that's another way that Anurata expresses. We individuate from our bliss so that we can interact with and appreciate our bliss. So the lessons of Anurata are about aspiring toward our inherent worth and doing that through relationship and being devoted to something without losing ourselves in something. And another element of Anurata is the idea of changing forms. As a soul, we come to the earth and we take a body, we incarnate, because through this incarnation, we have experiences, we have relationships, but we live so that we can grow and learn and evolve. And in the process of that, we have to shake off what our form was when it no longer serves our growth. So we take on a new form. Sometimes that comes in the form of physically a new appearance, sometimes that comes in a new profession, sometimes that comes in the form of different personality, sometimes that comes in the form of different friends, of different groups. But where we are currently reflects what our growth has been to this point. And so when you take on a new form, it may be that you were entering a new phase of life. So whatever's happening, whatever's coming and going, what you do with eclipses is you just let it go. That's what you can do. 
It's happening. There's nothing you can do to stop it. It's happening. What you can do is control the way that you react to it. You can control how you're going to allow it into your life, whatever's happening, and how you're going to move into, with ease, the next phase. Virgos, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This eclipse is taking place in your third house, and third house has to do with everything in close proximity to you. So short distance travel, your vehicle, your siblings, your neighborhood, your community, your um, say like your, your Mercury, correspondence. So this energy is happening in your third house and then in your ninth house, which is across the wheel. And the ninth house has to do with the higher mind, right? So third house is what's immediate to you and the ninth house is your perspective based on what was immediate to you so look for some sudden change first of all happening in your third house this could be something like um, your car finally dies or there will be some change in relationship to siblings or some community issue some type of, I'm trying to think of the Mercury word, um, correspondence, advertising, things like that, right? So watch, watch for something, but uh, with a lunar eclipse, it will be eclipsed out. So watch for some sudden change, like something going away. The second thing is, do you have right relationship with what's around you? Okay, so here's where we're looking at third house and ninth house. Third house is what's in proximity to you, usually kind of like where you grew up and what's around you. So what was the basis of your thinking and your communication and what were the experiences that shaped you early on? Ninth house is higher education, religion, philosophy, so ninth house becomes your perspective. Third house is how you're looking up at the world. Ninth house is the perspective in which you begin to view the world. You're looking down into the world. So with these two placements, do you have right relationship with the development of your perspective? As in, the information that you take in your relationship with information sources, your relationship with communication experiences, even your relationship with siblings, all of the things that form your immediate environment, all of the things that form your perspective as you step out into the world, all the things you are on a day-to-day -day basis, are these things supporting you and are you supporting them? Do you have right relationship with what's around you? In addition to that, do you have right relationship with your philosophies, with your religious ideals? with the larger ideas through which you frame the world. What is your relationship with these experiences? How are you interpreting these experiences? And how are they helping you on your spiritual path? How are they assisting in your development? And how is your interaction with them moving you toward a place of greater devotion toward your goals? That's what the energy is having you look at. A third element, what secrets are in your third house? What secrets, what things of the past, 
what shadow elements that you wish people just wouldn't say out loud, you wish nobody would mention them again, you wish they would be gone forever. You may have been having these thoughts, maybe having these dreams, maybe having these uh, things flash before your eyes for the past few weeks, because it's, it's been around, it's been in the energy. So what of these things of your past have been jumping up into your awareness? Because any secrets that exist, they drive you. As long as you wish for them to be suppressed, hidden, put away, not mentioned, they drive you. With your community, with your siblings, with people around you, anybody who knows you, right? You know how this goes. People know something about you and they kind of remind you of it subtly or they treat you in a certain way because who you are now, like who you were then, whenever it happened, 5, 10, 20 years, whatever. You've changed forms since then. You will continue to change forms, but these secrets continue to put you at an age, at a place, at a mentality, at a level that you no longer are. So what that means is you can bring them out now. You can bring them out. They don't have any power over you anymore if you choose. Now is the time in this eclipse season to let them go. Forgive yourself for the version of you that you were at that time. That isn't you now. That isn't you. And so those past energies don't have any hold on you unless you let them. So now is the time to forgive yourself, release them, let them go. And for you to interact in a way that is beneficial for your path and to change form and shed whatever doesn't continue along on your journey.